Good morning, everyone, to a very beautiful yet chilly morning in here in San Diego. I'm going to do a range test on the Superhuman F5 Trail. And I would have started a little bit earlier. We're already four miles into the ride, but admittedly, most of it was pretty loud. There was a lot of wind from going downhill. So that's why I'm getting you on the uphill sections. What we're gonna do is we're gonna ride from Alpine, California, all the way to Imperial Beach, California. I'm not sure how far it is. I think it's 35 to 40 miles. And we just wanna see how the F5 does. The goal of this ride is to actually test the claimed range of 50 miles that Superhuman says the F5 does. The parameters that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay in whatever assist mode feels right. So like right now, I'm going pretty flat, a tiny bit of downhill, level one. If we have to hit any big climbs, we're gonna have to go up, we're gonna have to go up. But that's how people usually ride these bikes. So you might be wondering how come we're testing this on the road instead of off-road. And the reasoning be, I think most people who would buy this bike are actually gonna use it for long distance commuting. Now don't worry anybody who wants to see an off-road range test. I'm actually gonna be testing this bike as a mountain bike going off-road. And in that test, I'll actually be keeping track of the mileage. It's not gonna be a range test per se, but I'll let you know how many feet I climb when I do that test, how far I go, and how much battery I use up. So hopefully get like an estimate. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start heading down Old Highway 80 and go into Uncon, California, then cut across the Spring Valley, and then down into Vero Beach. So here we go. So we just hit seven miles. So let's talk about what the goals of this test. One, obviously, is to see the range of this bike. And two, I think more importantly, is the comfort of the bike. It doesn't matter what the range of a bike is if it's not comfortable. You could have a range of 600 miles on a bike. If it doesn't ride good or if it's uncomfortable and you can only make it 20 miles, your butt hurts, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so update mile 11. We just rode through Lakeside, California. We're actually going to the outskirts of El Cajon. So far, doing pretty good. The battery indicates we have 81% of the battery left. Got 11 miles. Keep in mind, there's a lot of flat going down, but there was some descending in there as well. When I started off the ride, I had a full battery. Display indicated a 48 mile range. So we'll see how true it is to that. So the goal we're gonna do is we're gonna check in every five miles or so, kind of give you an update, how comfortable the bike is, We'll talk about different things on the bike. So I guess the first thing I'll talk about is which model I'm riding right now. So I have the standard model with an 840 watt hour battery. There actually is a touring model that comes with a suspension seat post, a light, and I believe a rear rack. Um, I chose not to get that one just because my intention is to actually turn this into an actual mountain bike. So the first thing I actually wanna discuss on this bike is the actual motor itself. This has a Bafang M600, and I gotta say, it's a beast of a motor. I'm only using level one. You probably can't tell how steep this road is. It's not the steepest road in the world, but this motor is so powerful. So when I was riding in the flats, I was able to maintain 23, 24 miles an hour on level one very, very easily. So this is a 500 watt mid-drive motor. That's a max torque of 120 new meters. It is insane. So even though we have a really, really big battery with 840 watt, this is a massive motor, so it's gonna eat a lot of battery, a lot more. I'm gonna check in to mile 15 or so. Uh, the only reason I won't check in, if I check in late, is because I'm in a fast section where it's really windy and I can't talk to the camera. So I will see you guys in about three or four miles. Okay, update mile 15. We're actually leaving El Cajon, going up Hamishaw into Rancho San Diego. Right now, the battery indicates we have 76%. I've only been using level one for everything. There hasn't been any massive hills, but there has been hills. And this thing just powers right up them in level one. So I guess while I have you, and we're not you know, doing 25 miles an hour and there's a lot of wind, so I can actually talk to you, I just want to discuss just a couple of things I really like that Superhuman did with his bike. And I think the biggest thing is just the part selection. So with a lot of bikes in the $2,000 to $3,000 range, they 
A lot of them do come with hub motors, rear hub motors. This is a mid-drive, which is a massive advantage. It's a super powerful mid-drive motor, massive battery. But beyond the motor and the battery, there's more to a bike. The first thing I really like what they do with the bike is they put a Shimano Diora drivetrain with a 10-speed. It has a 36 tooth in the back, which isn't crazy big. But the, one of the coolest things is it has a clutch. So if anyone doesn't know what a clutch is, it basically adjusts the tension on the actual chain so you don't hear chain slap. What's chain slap? If you've ever ridden a cheaper bike that doesn't have a clutch, you notice when you go over bumps or any of that stuff like that, you hear a da 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 where the chain's hitting the rear chain stay. The clutch does essentially just, it creates tension in the chain so it doesn't have chain slap. That doesn't sound like a big deal. It is a massive deal in my personal opinion. I like my bikes being pretty quiet. And one complaint I always had about e-bikes under, you know, you know, serious five, six thousand e-bikes is that they tend to use like a Shimano Acera drivetrain, which is not a bad shifting drivetrain. It's not a very good one either, but it doesn't have a clutch. The next thing I'm gonna talk about that I think is huge, 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 especially for this price, are the brakes. Now this has hydraulic disc brakes. It's not hard to find hydraulic disc brakes on an e-bike under $3,000. But these are Magura MT5s. These are very, very good hydraulic disc brakes. These are disc brakes that they put on big time mountain bikes. Most of the times you see like these really cheap Chinese brands. I think some of them are called Zoom or Jack or something like that. They're disc brakes, but they're not very good disc brakes. Now talking about the brakes, another thing I'm really happy with is the rotor size. So Superhuman put 203 millimeter rotors both on the front and the rear. Why is that a big deal? Heat dissipation. The bigger the rotor, the faster the rotor will cool down when it's being used. This is a very, very heavy bike. So this creates a lot of heat when you're trying to slow down. So in order to fix that, you have big rotors and then problem solved. I guess another thing which is good, you know, I don't expect great is I think the fork is actually better than I was expecting. Is it an amazing fork? No, but for its intended purpose, it works very, very, very well. It is a coil fork, but it's a very well dampened fork. I do like the way it rides. I think for riding on the road or for very light trails, this would be really good. I'm gonna test it on a trail to figure it out, but on the street, big fan. It's almost at mile 20. So I just wanted to check in with you right now. I'm actually on the way, uh, we're 19.23 miles in. We still have 76% battery, and the display shows 28 miles left. So something I wanna discuss is an advantage of this bike compared to a normal commuting bike, um, such as, you know, a road bike has a e-motor. So if you notice that, I'm actually able to ride off-road. <laughs> this is huge. This is not mountain biking, it's not any of that stuff, but having the ability to go on a dirt path, and we're still doing 13 miles an hour up this hill. I'm not trying hard as you can tell from my, my breath. I'm not pushing hard at all. The next thing I wanted to kind of point out, and this is something that actually is kind of rare on e-bikes, and or at least lower priced e-bikes under $3,000, is this bike actually has a water bottle mount. So I'm able to, actually drink some water while I go. It seems so small, but it's such a big detail. So you can tell that at least Superhuman intended for this bike to be ridden really far. And they thought about these little minor things that some companies don't think about. As a matter of fact, my Enduro bike doesn't have a water bottle mount inside the triangle. It's at the bottom of the down tube, which is a really bad design because then mud and dirt gets into it. So. This does exist, I'm not saying it doesn't, so just something to note, I'm contemplating doing a hill climb on this. I feel that since I did a lot of, I don't know, maybe like two miles of downhill, that, I don't know, I kinda wanna put uphill in there to kinda offset the battery I didn't use on that, use it on uphill. And also, let's see how powerful this motor actually is. So um, I'll check in a couple minutes when we get to one of San Diego's steepest hill climbs. All right, so, if anybody who's watching is from San Diego, you might know exactly where we are. We are in Dictionary Hill, infamous Dictionary Hill. 
we're going up Apple Street. This is a tw an average of 22 degrees straight up. We're going up the steep 28% grade. I'm in level one. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So, so Dixner Hill. Okay, so we are at the average grade of 22%. I'm in the lowest gear. We have a 40 tooth cog in the front on the chain ring and a 36 tooth in the back. If you look up forward, that's the steepest part of the hill. That's 28 degrees. I might have to power, buff up the power on this because right now I'm just on level one. And so far, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Whew. Holy moly. Oh yeah, I'm bumping up the power on this one. I'm starting to get really, really tired. Let's do this. Oh, wow. We're just on level three. Now we're doing eight and a half miles per hour. We're not even on level five. Level three power level out of five. And this bike is cruising up this hill. Says seven and a half miles an hour. Not that bad. What the hell? All right. There you go. Apple Street, infamous Dictionary Hill. 20 degree climb, power level three out of five. This bike just absolutely did phenomenal. Better than any other bike I've tested up this hill before. We just got done doing the infamous Apple Street hill climb in Dictionary Hill. This bike just hauled up that hill. Mind you, I was only a level three the whole time, up the steep parts. The regular part, I was at level one. That was a little bit of a struggle, I'm not gonna lie. But I went to level three and it just powered up. I was doing seven and a half, eight miles an hour. I was able to keep talking to you guys. At that point, I'd already done 20 miles, 22 miles. So yeah, this bike's pretty crazy. I would be very interested to see what this thing does on a level five up that hill or even a steeper hill if I can find one. We've hit 30 and a half miles. So far, it's going really, really good. I'm feeling powerful. I'm feeling comfortable. I don't really have any complaints right now. The bike's doing wonderfully. The display is indicating between 60 and 70% battery left. I think it's just trying to estimate based on how much power I'm putting out and how much power it's putting out more importantly. So as of right now, it's gonna beat the estimate of 50 miles. Something to keep in mind is that on this ride, I've only been using level one with the exception of the hill climb where I went to level three. It's not because I'm trying to get every single mile I can out of this bike. It's because this bike is so powerful that it's really not necessary to use anything other level one here on this particular ride. Okay, so we just hit mile 39. We're literally a quarter mile, if not even less to the coffee shop where I'm gonna stop and just have some coffee and small bite eat. Display says we have 44% battery. So 39 miles, 44%. So far so good. Let's see I go some neat and then we'll keep on riding. Update a little bit. Took a little break. We're at 39.3 miles. We've officially hit the strand. Coronado is about nine to 10 miles north. So uh, let's go and put some power down. Okay, check and update. We've almost hit 47 miles. We've officially finished the strand. Heading to beautiful Coronado, California. If you look ahead, 
around 11 o'clock, you'll see the Hotel Del Coronado, 19%. So it looks like we will break the 50 miles. <clears throat> the bike's doing phenomenally. I was able to do 20 miles an hour pretty easily on the straightaway with the headwind on level one assistance. So I'm gonna turn around pretty soon just because I'm at 18% battery and it says I have a range of eight miles and I think the parking spot I'm supposed to meet my wife is roughly eight to nine miles. So hopefully I'll make it back <laughs> off the battery that I have. If I don't, oh well, then I get to tell you how it pedals without assistance. So I will check in with you once we get back and kill the battery. Okay, so <clears throat> I've just hit mile 56 and a half and I'm at 8% battery. It says at three miles of range. Something that's really interesting though is that this bike is like an NBA game. This 8% has been showing for the last four or five miles. So I'm not sure why, but I still have battery. We've officially beat the estimated range of 50 plus miles. We're now at 56 and a half. Uh, I think I'm gonna stop because I don't really feel like doing circles in the neighborhood over and over and over again. So my plan is actually, when I get back to my neighborhood, I'm gonna ride the bike to see if I can actually kill the battery. But as of right now, 56.73 miles is what we're at, and she still has battery. All right, I'll get back to you in a little bit. Okay, last update. So I'm actually riding the bike around my neighborhood because yesterday, I did 56.75 miles. I was able to knock down the battery to 8%. So I really wanted to run it till it died. So I'm to ride around my neighborhood to see if I could kill it. So just to tell you what's happening. So right now I'm at 5%. I've gone 3.4 miles. So I officially broke 60 miles. Um, what happens on this bike is that it still provides power, but it definitely limits the amount of power that it's putting out. Once you hit about 10%, 8% around that area. So regardless of what level I use, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, it always puts the same power out. So the bike definitely feels more like a normal bike now. Um, it's not putting out a ton of power. I, on the actual display itself, it gives you power output between zero and 750. It's pretty much tapping around 225, 250 as a power output, um, which is totally fine. So I think, at this point, I'm using more of my leg energy than actually the battery. So I'm just gonna say that you can safely do 60 miles on a battery. Just keep in mind, probably after about 55 or so, you're gonna be limited on power just based on the actual ride that I did. So I will give you my final thoughts right now and let you know how the bike did. So just some final thoughts on the range test for the F5 trail. As a whole, I was incredibly impressed by not only the power of the F5, but also the comfort as well. When I came into the test, I was expecting to go between 45 and 50 miles. So the fact that it went farther is actually pretty amazing. So the final numbers are as follows. In my first ride, I rode 56.75 miles with 1,657 feet of elevation gain. And on the second ride, I did 3.88 miles with 272 feet of elevation gain. That means that this bike did a total of about 60.6 miles and a little over 1,900 feet of climbing from one charge. The thing is I could have went farther, but at that point, the bike was in eco mode where it did have assistance, but it was very minimal. That also means that if you had the standard 650 watt battery, the bike would have gone about 47 miles. But considering the 840 watt battery is only $200 extra, I think it's worth the extra money. So overall, I'm extremely impressed the way the bike felt road, and just the overall quality. And as far as I'm aware of, there aren't any bikes at this price point that can match the F5 trail in power, range, and part selection. So if you're looking for a powerful mid-drive e-bike that doesn't break the bank, I think you should consider the F5. I will be testing this bike on the trails to see it handles off-road duties, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great one.